Hi, this is Jackie from SchoolofDigitizing.com. I'm here to share with you some rethink and merging tips that I have discovered on my way working through the software. Um, so let's start with the new page. It's always the best. Start new, start fresh. I'm going to select the circle here, the oval or circle, and step is selected. Change my color to red, pink, whatever, whichever color you choose. And just drag a circle, no specific size, but right at the bottom you can see um, the size at the bottom. If you want to end, hit enter twice to have a perfect circle. I would like to edit this circle. So if I go to my reshape object, which is my editing tool, I will find that there is not enough nodes for me Except from making it taller or wider, there's nothing else that I can do. So now we're going to cheat the program. Select the, the, um, the full object and select your outline. While it's in outline, but I want it in full, go back to full. If I select my reshape tool now, you will discover that I've got much more nodes. I've got a stitch angle that I can control. I've got a start and end position that I can control if I want to. Plus, I can add my own nodes by a left click for a square or a right click for a curve line. But I need two left clicks, one at the bottom, one at the top, as I only want to create a little heart-shaped object here for me and now I'm ready with my heart shape that I wanted it's not really a heart that I wanted I would like to make a little flower using this so now we go down to the wreathing um, tool right at the bottom left click on the wreathing tool select the amount of objects I would like to wreath and this is six for now Bring them together. You can create a little staff um, as a centerpiece there, or you can make them join up as much as you like. It doesn't matter. It's what you want that matters here. Yeah. Left click, and the message will pop up to, to ask me if I want to merge it. Now, what does it mean saying, if I, if I say yes, what will happen? Well, I'm going to show you. But merging means I'm taking these six objects I've asked by selecting the wreathing tool. I've asked the software package to give me six hearts. Now, as the software picked up that the hearts are overlapping one another, and it doesn't know what I really want to do, do I want it as six separate objects? Do I want it as one solid object? By saying yes, I'll make it one solid object. And there you are. I've got a beautiful little flower that I've got in the center now. Yet, I would like to do some more exciting stuff here and create it and change the styles. So, with the object selected, I've got right at the bottom, I've got the star full icon. Or, I can go to object properties and go to effects and there is a a heading that says star or wave fill selected and if I select this one it's better because the reason why I say it the little hole that the star has in the middle the star fill object although it's not a star it's a flower and well it could be a round circle too that measurement there is the size of the circle let me press apply and you will see what happens now there you can see it's that little hole now sometimes you would like that hole to be bigger for whatever reason. Let's assume you're going to embroider this and you would like to put some Sharovskis or you just would like a big hole there. Whatever. The size of the hole can be determined by you. I'm going to make this slightly bigger and say make the width and the height of this circle in the center. Get, make it for me. I would choose it as a 5 millimeter. Apply and say OK. If you have a look at it now, you will see it's very dense because Object Properties, my full stitch, tells me I've selected number 12. 12 is a random stitch. In other words, 
the, the needle penetration point is at random. It doesn't create lines. It's some of my favorite fill type that I like to use. You can select any fill type because what we're going to do, you're not really going to see the fill type as such. I'm going to put the spacing up to 2 millimeter and say apply. The next thing I would like to do is make sure there's no underlay. Take away your underlay. And go to others and give it a travel on edges. So you make sure that you've got a nice and smooth edge, top and bottom. The next step you can have a look at is look where's your start and entry points. And they all at one point, which is good. So they're not messing around. Fine. Here I've got my beautiful design and it's ready to be used as it is. Or I can create an outline. I can also create multiple outlines if I want to use it as a quilt with quilt outlines. I want to uh, ever show you something different today. So for this I'm going to use one outline only. Not selecting outline holes because I don't want the outline in the hole. And select my satin stitch as an outline and say OK. The satin stitch, of course, you can go and um, oh, cancel. Make sure you've selected in the object properties. You can go for the separate object. You can go and change your satin stitch size if you like to. Or you can change it into a pattern run, single stitch. You can do anything. I like to choose the satin stitch. First of all, I want to check my start and end position is right at the bottom. Just to make sure for future use, where is the start and end of my star object? It was at the top. So this will create, I'm bringing it down. My start and end is all on the same place. And select that, start and end, and look if you have your start and end not exactly on the point what happens there. So it is important that you bring them right into the place. It's not right. So let me take this one away. Go back to the other one. Let's see there is take my start and end point of the yes. The start and end point there. Let's go to design view that we can see better. And if I put my start and end point right over the edge there, it should be fine. It doesn't want to move away. It originally was there, the start point and the end point was here. Let's put it back. Let's take the outline. Yes, that was my problem. Can you see that I've taken the start and end away? So you have to sometimes obey the pro program and sometimes you can do your own thing. You can also go to arrange, put your start and end first and last stitch. That's only while I'm digitizing that I do it so that you don't get confused with jump stitches. See them as jump stitches and it's not truly jump stitches. After I've done it, I'm happy I've managed my start and end point. I'm going to group this two. Now the next st step we would like to do, I'm take, toggling off the hoop. The next step we want to do is to duplicate this object. So I'm just cloning by right click, dragging it and putting it one side. There you are. I've done my cloning. Now I would like, and as you can see there is my jump stitch running. So for the while I'm at it and while I'm concentrating at it, let's do that. Let's put this little flower there. Now my jump stitch is there. We will have jump stitches if objects don't meet exactly. Then you will always have jump stitches. I would like this flower to be much smaller because I want to circle the bigger flower with some small flowers. There's many ways we can do it. We can select the scale down by 20%. We can go to Object Properties and go to General and say select your proportional if you want it in proportional. And let's say I would like that flower to be 50 centimeter in height and in width. And they sometimes differ a little bit. That's fine. 
and apply and OK. I also could have hold in my shift key, drag one of the handles and can you see it makes it larger or smaller proportionally. So there you are. I've done my smaller flower. I have a look at it in 3D and it looks fine. Sometimes you need to go and check your stitches, sometimes not. Always good to run a test first. Now, this one I would like to do some wreathing on it, but this time I want to use eight. And no merging will take place. If, if they meet and it asks me to merge, I would have said no in this case because I want them to be loose objects. However, don't you think they will look smart if they circle around and look how easy can we use the center of this big flower and press it and wait and there you are. Don't you think this is beautiful and an easy way to create some lovely designs for quilts and it only take a minute or two, 11 minutes to be sure. Now you can go and say file save as settings, fabric display. I love doing this. Selecting a dark color, either navy or black. I like to see how will it stand out on a darker background. And once I'm happy with this, I go and say file save as and save my um, design. Give it a name. It says it's bigger than the hoop. I say no, save everything for me. Because this can be a lovely multi-hooping project if you need to do more hoops or if you have the bigger, uh, bigger hoop, there is the size at the bottom, 259 by 259. If this fits in your large hoop, maybe you've got an industrial machine or 830, then you can do it. If you have a smaller machine, you can create uh, the same look by using multi-hooping. I thank you so much for the time. And please don't forget to pop out to pop in at School of Digitizing. Um, let me just bring that up again. Schoolofdigitizing.com and see what else we've got for you. And maybe you might be interested in joining our membership and meet once a week. That would be so much fun to meet you. Bye for now.